there. I'm here today from my loft studio from quiltinginthelof.com. My name is Robin and today I want to talk to you about my uh, recent pattern that I've designed for a DIY water bottle tote. Necessity is the mother of an invention and um, I walk every single day and or I try to at least to stay healthy and hydration I know in the summer months in particular is really important. I think if you exercise anytime, hydration is important. Um, and I just thought that it bothers me when I'm walking and I have a water bottle that's perspiring in my hand and I'm dropping it. Um, it just bothers me to carry it that way. And I thought, how can I come up with a tote that will work so that it's just not bothering me to hold on to that water bottle? And so I designed this pattern and um, it not only carries water bottle totes, I discovered it's 11 inches in height, so it, it can conceal a little wine to wine bottle if you want to go over to the neighbors. And I know some of us are getting back to, with our second vaccines, aren't, we're able to socialize. And so you could carry this little water, water uh, sorry, wine bottle tote to your neighbors. You can take this off and add the cross body strap, which is the instructions are included in the pattern on my website. And this is the cross body strap, which you can click on easily with lobster claws and D-rings. And then you can wear it as a cross body uh, tote. It's super, super simple. It's got, it includes um, two, two pockets, one on the inside that's very concealed and one on the outside. It's also totally reversible. So the pattern with the four pages of instruction explain how to make it reversible. I've used batting. You can also use Thinsulate to make it very, very insulated if you're concerned about um, keeping your beverage really, really cold. Um, but I do find that the batting also works and it does keep my water bottle nice and cold. Also, I mean, I us usually have an insulated um, coffee cup. So, um, I mean, that goes without saying that that would stay fairly hot anyways, but it's just a handy thing. So even in the winter time, it might be a handy thing if you're going to work and you want to carry your coffee mug you got this nice cross body and you got your lunch bag and you know whatever else your computer whatever hat you have it that you have for work also it carries a nice tall water bottle so it's a great pattern and so you head on over to quiltinginthelock.com and you can have a look at that pattern it's ten dollars um, as i said it includes four pages of detailed instructions on how to make this water bottle and next up we're going to talk about the supplies that we need to make this particular project. I'm back again. I'm just here. I'm going to talk about uh, the supplies that you need to make your water bottle tote or your beverage tote, whatever you want to call it, your wine bottle tote or your coffee carafe tote. Um, so there are some things, some basic things you need. Obviously you would need a sewing machine, a walking foot or a free motion foot to quilt your project. You'll need thread, some scissors, some basic sewing supplies, hopefully not a seam ripper. As well, you'll need a piece of batting that is 13 by 11 inches. It's 13 inches wide by 11 inches tall. And then two pieces of fabric, um, one for your outside fabric. This pink one is my outside fabric. Um, and then you'll need a lining fabric that is also 13 by 11 inches. So all three of those measurements are the same. You'll need three circles, of uh, two of fabric, um, three inches, and this is the lining and the outer fabric. And then you'll need a three inch piece of batting as well. I used a Eleanor Burns Quilt in a Day template to cut mine out. You could use a cardboard and a protractor, or a, if you have a small dish in the house that's about three inches, you can use that as well for the base. You do need three inches. You need two pieces of fabric that are five by 12 inches, five inches wide by 12 inches, for the pockets and that's for the outside and then the one for the lining if you want pockets on the inside and the outside. Um, I should mention as well if you don't want to use batting you can use Thinsulate but that's that metal covered batting that's uh, very helpful in terms of an insulation factor so you could use that as well. If you're going to do the cross body tote you need a three inch by 52 to 56 inch piece of fabric so fabric is only about 42 inches in width. So you may have to add like two, you have to make cut two strips from the um, actual, and you'll have to measure to see where you want this strap to go. 
uh, but 52 to 56 inches is the, approximately the, the measurement. And then you need one inch uh, ribbing, which is 52 to 56 inches as well. Um, if you're gonna make the short handle, you only need uh, three inches by 12 inches. Um, and then you'll also need two ro uh, swiveling, ro uh, swiveling lobster claws, okay? You'll need two of those. And then you'll need two D-rings, which are right here. These two one-inch D-rings. And the lobster claws are one inch as well. And then two little pieces of interfacing, uh, lightweight fusible interfacing. This is for the um, lobster claw slash D-ring uh, tabs. Um, it's really for the D-ring tabs. You'll need those and they are two and a half by three inches and then you'll need two pieces of fabric that are um, two and a half by three inches and i recommend that your lining fabric coordinates with your outside because these uh, tabs have to go with the lining um, it's important so make sure it coordinates um, also i wanted to mention you can use recycled denim so this one i didn't even put the d-ring tabs on i just used recycled denim and made it the way it is so that's another really great option it makes a really nice sturdy tote um, I top stitched the, with the quilting, the same as the actual, the way that the actual uh, fabric came to me. I had this top, top stitch line. I thought, well, I'm gonna use that as my inspiration and added these additional yellow lines as well. So um, you can do that and it'll make a nice reversible tote. And don't forget that you'll also need the pattern, which is available on my website at quiltinginthelock.com. I'm starting with step one now, and that is to prepare your outside fabric with the batting and then the base of your uh, tote with the batting as well. So I, we're not even gonna think about the lining right now. We've got the lining set aside. So you're gonna quilt your little circle for the outside fabric to your batting. And then you're gonna quilt the uh, outside of your fabric to the, the batting for the body of the tote. And that's the first step. And I'm using a free motion foot and my feed dogs will be down and I'll be just free motioning, uh, just a, probably just a meander on it. Um, hopefully I'll show you how I'm doing that next. So just like that, like magic, I have now my outside fabric adhered to my batting. And, I, and you can see that there's just a little meander on the back, nothing fancy, very quick and also my circle for my bottom completed. So the next step is getting ready for this, the D-ring tabs. So what you're gonna do is fuse the interfacing to the back of your fabric. This is my lightweight interfacing, and this is the front of my strap tab, or my D-ring tab. And I did it for the second one as well. And then you're gonna press uh, towards the back one quarter inch on the long side. Okay, so it's gonna look like that. You see that? Okay, and then you're going to take and press the raw edge, which is not folded, into the center. And then fold your, sorry, like I'll show you like that. Okay, and then you're gonna show, throw, sorry, fold the quarter inch side finished over top. You get it like about, you want it to be, look like it's about a, an inch in width, okay? It, it doesn't matter if it's slightly narrower, it just can't be thicker than one inch, okay? And then you're gonna, we're gonna top stitch it. So I'm gonna go ahead and top stitch both of mine and press them like I showed you with the quarter inch in and this side, the raw edge folded in. Press it over like that. And I'm gonna press it with the iron and then I'm gonna top stitch it and I'll be back to show you. I'm back again to show you what I do to prepare the strap tabs to be adhered to the outside fabric. So what I've done is I've measured in three and one eighths inch from the wide side, like the 13 inch side. Right here, I put a little black dot. I don't know if you can see the two little black dots, one here and one here. And I'm gonna add the strap tabs to it. So this is what my strap tabs look like. They're all top stitch, an eighth of an inch from the edge and then down the center just to make sure I get all my folds and everything uh, adhered. And I'm gonna just take this D-ring and fold it over like that. And I'm gonna adhere it to the top side of my uh, outside fabric with a clip. I love these little wonder clips. Any of the um, stuff that I use throughout my videos will be shown. I'll have links to where to get these kind of things below, but I love these little clips. They're great for thick fabric. 
and I just hold it until I'm ready to sew it to the sewing machine. And I have centered these strap tabs over the top. If your fabric's directional, keep in mind that this is the top of the fabric. So if it's directional and you have a gorgeous flower, you want the flower facing up this way and the leaves down here, okay? Um, and then I'm gonna go to the sewing machine. I'm gonna top stitch it twice across the top, about an eighth of an inch in um, from the raw edge. And I'll get back to you on what the next step is. So I'm back with the finished product and that is the finished strap tabs. If you can see they're top stitched. I actually did three stitches, three lines of stitches only to make sure they're really secure. This way your straps will never ever break off. Sometimes you've, you know, you carry it around for a while and you see straps kind of ripping away. We don't want that to happen. So that's going to make it really nice and secure. And then I'm going to talk to you about how we do the straps um, themselves. You do them almost the exact same way as the strap tabs where you fold and press it in one quarter of an inch, the whole length of your um, crossbody strap. And then what you're gonna do is lay your strapping um, down the center like this, lay it down the center like this of your strap fabric, okay? And then you're going to fold your raw edge just past the center and then you're gonna fold the folded edge over top of that and then you're gonna to top stitch it. So it's gonna kind of look like this. Okay. And then I'm gonna go ahead and top stitch it, get back to you and show you what the finished uh, strap looks like, the crossbody strap. I'm gonna show you now that I have my strap completed, I'm just gonna show you kind of like what the top stitching looks like it's just stitched down the center and an eighth of an inch on either side, much like the strap tabs. Now what I'm gonna do is add to each end one of these lobster claws, these rotating lobster claws or toggles. Um, and you're basically gonna roll the fabric over to the wrong side and then stitch it. I roll it over about an inch and then top stitch it three or four times. I'm gonna do it on either end and I'll be right back to you. So I've got my straps all completed. As you can see, they're just folded over. It's the 52 inch length, because I'm a shorty. And uh, I've got the lobster claws on each end, um, folded over towards the wrong side, and then top stitched on the right side. And so they're ready to go. And I'm just gonna set them aside because we're gonna work on assembling our actual tote. I'm just gonna regroup a little bit just to let you know what we've done so far with our DIY water bottle tote. And so we've completed the strap, the longer strap. If you wanted to do the shorter one, it's 12 by three inches that the fabric needs to be. And then your one inch strapping as well that needs to be 12 inches. And then a uh, webbing rather. And then um, we finished the, the base, which is the circle. And we finished the outer fabric with the uh, D-ring tabs on it as well. And what we're gonna work on now is the pockets. It's very, very simple. So what I'm gonna have you do is take your five by, I think it's 13 inch piece of fabric or 12 inch, five by 12 inch piece of fabric. I'm gonna have you uh, fold it like this. So it is a full length like this and then fold it. Oops. And you're gonna leave a tiny little opening maybe in the one corner, maybe about two inches. You're gonna sew all the way around right to the bottom, and then we're gonna turn it to the right side and um, our pocket will just about be ready, okay? So that's what we're gonna do with both our out, outside pocket and our inside lining pocket. I'm back again and I have my pockets completed. So this is what it looks like, it's just a square of fabric. And I have my outside one as well for my outside fabric completed. And so what you're gonna do then is measure, take your outside fabric like this and measure three inches from the top and one and a quarter inches from the outside edge, the 11 inch edge, and you're gonna just kind of line it up. I just use a ruler to, I don't know if you can see that, but I'm using a ruler to line it up right here. And, uh, and that way I'm just gonna pin it and preferably with the folded edge up, although I noticed that to get my directionality correct 
with this particular fabric, I need to use the um, sewn edge. It doesn't really matter as long as you leave the opening at the top. Um, so I, I just left it in the instructions that way um, just because I thought the folded edge looked nice and neat. So I'm using my ruler right now and I'm going to line this up perfectly so that I can go ahead and, and uh, pin it to my outside fabric and then I'll pin it to my lining as well. My lining doesn't have any stabilizer or batting and that's okay, that's just the way the lining works. It's just simply lining. And I'm gonna pin these and then I'm gonna top stitch them one eighth of an inch in from the edge with both the outside fabric and the lining. And I'll get back to you and you'll see that I have that done in just a few minutes. I have my uh, outside pocket completed. And I'm gonna bring it up close to the uh, camera so that you can see that I have backstitched at the top. Okay, and then I also have my lining completed. You're leaving the opening at the top so you have a nice pocket. And if you notice the directionality of the way the these little shark, or actually they're uh, dolphins are, are swimming, okay? It's upwards, so we wanna keep track of where the directionality is. And that is actually not the folded edge, but it still looks pretty good. So that's the pocket. This is the secret, I wanna say chocolate pocket because it's inside and no one would know it or a candy or something like that or uh, money, whatever you wanna put in that pocket on the inside. And we're, we're going to basically sew right sides together along the 11 inch edge. Um, and we're gonna, on the lining, we're gonna leave an opening because that's where we're gonna turn it. So I would leave a, an opening in the middle of about maybe three inches. And then we're gonna sew the lining, the, sorry, the outside fabric as well. And you're gonna sew that one completely all the way down. Don't worry about leaving an opening. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I'll be right back at you. And then we're gonna add the bottoms, the bases to this for both the outside fabric and for the lining. Okay, we'll be back shortly. So I have my lining and my uh, out, outer fabric all ready. And as you can see, I, I forgot to mention that I use a 3 8 inch seam allowance um, when I'm sewing these together. I do have a gap in the lining, about a three, about a three inch gap. Um, so just make sure you use a three eight inch seam allowance, otherwise your circle won't fit. And I've done the same thing for the outer fabric with the batting. It's got a, it's, and the seam is pressed open. That decreases the bulk when we're actually sewing the lining and the batting together. And so then what you're gonna do now is add your base fabric. So I have my little quilted circle for the base and I'm gonna put it, Leave it, leave your uh, lining outside, like um, turn the inside out is what I wanna say. And then you're just gonna pin your circle. So I don't know if you can see that, but I'm pinning my circle right sides together with my, um, with my batting. And I'm gonna do the same for the lining. And then I'm gonna sew really, really, really carefully uh, with a one quarter inch seam allowance all the way around the circle. And that's gonna basically um, add the base to my DIY water bottle tote and we'll be back very shortly. So there we have it, our base is sewn on onto the outside fabric and then also sewn on to the lining fabric. So you're gonna leave the lining fabric the way it is, don't touch it now. You're gonna take your outside fabric and turn it to the right side. Just kind of push out the base, make sure that it's all turned the right way out. Turn it out like that. You're going to take this outside fabric and you're going to put it inside the lining fabric and you're going to match your seams. Red that I'm going to just cut off there just to, doesn't distract me. And I'm going to match my seams. So our right sides are now together. I'm gonna to make sure that these tabs are turned on the in, to the inside. And then where there's the seam allowance, which I'm just gonna try and match up, make sure that you pin that first, that you've got it all set up properly. And I'm gonna pin on the outside because I'll be working from the outside. 
So I've matched that seam. That's the first thing I want to do. Then I'm going to go around and I'm going to pin, making sure that the, the D rings are down and the tabs are down. And I'm going to pin all the way around the top, matching all the edges. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to sew it a quarter of an inch and I'll get back to you in just a minute or so. So I have my bag uh, top all sewn around one quarter inch from the seam, from the top seam allowance. It's stitched. And what I'm going to show you now is how you turn it to the right side. Um, so what you're going to do is through the gap that you left in the lining, you're just going to pull out your bottom fabric completely. And you're going to make your lining go to the right side. And then you notice your gap that you have. I'm going to go ahead and stitch it on the sewing machine. And then I'll get back to you and show you how I tuck this back inside the line, or sorry, the outside, tuck the lining back inside the outside fabric, and how I top stitch the edge. So I've now, I've uh, top stitched the little gap closed. It's all closed up just by machine. You could also do it by hand if you really wanted to do it by hand, and that would look beautiful as well. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to tuck it back inside of my outer fabric, the lining inside of my outer fabric. I'm just going to give it a good push with my fist, my hand. And then I've just kind of sculpted it with my fingers, make sure everything's falling down in there nicely. And I have a free arm on my sewing machine. I don't know if you can see it right here. I've taken the plate off, the uh, base plate off, and I'm gonna use my free arm to sew around the top three eighths inches. And what I'm gonna do too is make sure that my strap tabs are out of the way. So they should be up like this, and then you'll take it to your free arm. But sculpt it enough to make sure that the lining fabric is down inside of the actual tote. You don't wanna see the lining fabric come up above your, uh, the edge of your outer fabric. It'll, it just doesn't look nice. So we're going to go ahead with a 3 8 inch seam allowance and I'll get back to you and I'll be adding the handles and we'll have our ta-da moment with all of our uh, DIY water bottle or slash beverage totes. We'll talk to you soon. As you see, I have my completed DIY beverage tote, um, DIY bot water bottle tote, DIY wine bottle tote, whatever you like. Um, but it is completed and I've top stitched 3 8 inch all the way around the top. And now all I have to do is clip on with my lobster claws onto my D rings, my st long strap. You can use a short strap as well. And in the instructions in the pattern, there is a, a shorter strap as well, which is nice to carry. So that's it, that's done. And I'm ready to put my water bottle in it. There's lots of room I wanted to mention as well. Um, and then the hidden pocket on the inside where you can put all of your secret little goodies or the outside pocket where you could put whatever you need ready at hand. You could always put some sunglasses in there as well as your credit card, maybe your pandemic mask or whatever you like, but it's all ready to go. And it's got a beautiful lining, which you can reverse as well. So you could turn it to the other side, which I'll do right now really quickly. I'll just turn it to the inside, to the other side, and you'll show you how bright and gorgeous it is on the other side as well. Taking a minute just to fluff it out here. And so there, there's the other side. If you are going to make it completely reversible, you might want to hand sew the inside lining because that just looks a little neater. But there you have it. You have two different styles to wear with whatever you're wearing. It's jeans on this side and maybe a summer dress, a pink summer dress on the other side. Whatever, you can also make it to match your outfit. I want to thank you for joining me today as we talked about our my new pattern called the DIY water bottle tote. As you can see, I've made several different variations of them. This is the one that we completed today and the lining is on the outside. Um, I also discovered just a few seconds ago another use for it, and that is to carry your best press in it. And if you go to a lot of quilting or sewing classes, this is a great thing to carry your best press to keep it upright. Um, so that's another thing you can carry in it. I'm sure there's multiple more uses than what I talked about. Um, if you want the pattern, head on over to my website at quiltinginthelock.com 
and I hope that you'll also sh follow me on social media. I will put my, I will display my links to social media, my website and Instagram and uh, Facebook as well. And I'm hoping that you'll have a great day today and that you're so happy.